Hello everyone, welcome to my creative corner. I'm glad you came by to see me today. Hope you are doing well. I am hanging in there. It has been a week and I'm just kind of mentally and physically exhausted at this point. Uh, so kind of trying to take it easy today. I uh, It was a rough day yesterday and I'm really tired and so we're gonna do something easy today. I did forget about uh, one of the other six bead daisy stitches. So we're gonna work on that today. Uh, it's called the Winnebago. It's really pretty. It's totally worth the effort and the time. I think I'm probably gonna do like a bracelet or necklace with it or something. Uh, so we're gonna work on that today. Something simple, something chill. Uh, not a lot going on, just trying to kind of recuperate and relax. And I've been on the phone like nonstop and had to travel yesterday and a funeral. So I am just kind of, kind of beat and sorry if I look that way because it's just, it's been a rough week. And so, uh, I did go out and kind of restock on some of my supplies yesterday so that was cool that was kind of a nice little break to go out and go to the craft store and do some shopping didn't get too much but i thought i'd go through and show you what i got so we can do that real briefly i got me some beads they were half off so score got another sale and i got uh i got some green uh bugles which is nice because i didn't have any greens so That'll be nice. I'm having a heck of a time finding opaque green and opaque brown size 11 seed beads. I can't, they, they don't have them. I might have to go out of town or something or order them because I cannot find them to save my life. So I got the green ones there and one second. Okay, sorry about that. More phone calls. Yay. No, it, it was nothing major. Okay, so where were we? We I showed you the green bugles, and those were a size three. No, two. A size two. So they're a little smaller, but they're really pretty. I thought they were really pretty. So it'll be nice to have those. And then I just got some size 11 beads. I got a, a red because, you know, I always dig through my soup for them. So I got a red. I got, uh, they didn't have, like I said, any green opegs. So I got this uh, green mat, which I thought was kind of pretty. Close enough to green, closest I can get to a green. So whatever, it is what it is. And I did get another uh, turquoise because I go through turquoise really fast. And I got another uh, light blue turquoise because I go through that one quick. And I another, got another... Uh, opaque royal because I like that royal blue and I think it's because maybe because they had the sale they didn't have a lot of the ones I wanted so uh for the black I had to get matte bummer I wanted the opaque because the opaque is really shiny and pretty but this is a matte so it's like a dull looking black but it'll still it'll still work till they maybe they get more in or something and then I got a uh, opaque white, which they had, which was good, which I needed. I was about on empty with that one. And then I did get a silver because I don't have the silver. So I got a silver and I'll figure something out to do with that. It'll, it'll look really pretty, I think. So that was cool. I got another beeswax. I got the darker one, which I like the kind of stickier, darker one a little better. So I got one of those. And I also got some findings, just regular clasp findings. And I did get, uh, I did get some hoops. And I have something in store with these that's going to be really fun. So I've been wanting to do it really bad. So I was excited to get these. These were half off also. So I was excited about that. So I got some hoops, hoop earrings. So we're going to be making some hoop earrings. So be ready for that one. That'll be fun. And the last thing, oh, and I also got some, uh, I went to the department store today and I got some headbands. And I know you're kind of like, what the heck? Or why are you showing me headbands? I'm going to do some uh, loomed headbands. 
So it'll look really neat. And so I got, I hope the size will work. I've never done it. So I, I'm pretty sure it'll work. Like they had the hard plastic ones at the craft store. And I was like, yeah, I, cause I want to be able to sew it on. I want to be able to do the, uh, loom part and then sew that on so that wasn't going to work for what i'm looking for so i got the uh just the elastic band ones they're not too flexible they're kind of tough hopefully we can figure something out with those because that'd be really cool if we could because it'd be really pretty so that's a possible future video there too i have to experiment a little bit with it and see what i can do and i did get uh little tiny containers they're so cute these little glass jars to put my findings in you know so i got different little findings in each jar to kind of keep track of them these things are tiny so they're easy to lose so i got something to keep everything in which is nice and then i got uh these clasp i don't know if you can see that the clasp findings like those, and they didn't come with the eyelets. I had to buy them separately. So I bought those, and then I had to buy these separately. So, you know, I, I haven't bought them in a long, long time. And when I bought them in the past, they were together. And it might just be that craft store, I don't know, but I was like, that kind of felt like a ripoff to me. But I was like, okay, I guess I'm buying the two parts separately and I was thinking well I could use the uh oh what are they called the jump rings but I don't like doing that because they have that gap and I'm worried that it'll get you know broke open and you know so I wanted the eyelets and I had to buy them separate and they give you 100 eyelets and 25 of the clasps yeah I don't know and I didn't know what to do with them. I didn't want these all these little bottles to be sitting around because my cats are going to run off with them. I know how they go. I know what they're how they work. So I had an old jewelry box and I stuck them in there and they fit perfect. So I have a little findings jewelry box thing going on, but it works really well. So that was my haul. That is everything I got. I'm still waiting on my thread. Wish really wish that would show up because I have so many earrings I want to make and I'm running really low on stuff. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. I don't know, but this, uh, that was kind of a nice little treat to be able to go to the craft store and kind of just chop and relax a little bit. It has been a very emotionally and uh, physically straining and draining week where I'm just about to collapse, <laughs> honestly. So I did catch up on some sleep last night, which was good. Uh, that was really nice to be able to sleep in and get my schedule kind of back on track. Uh, I got to go back to work tomorrow, so I have to be kind of prepared for that. Uh, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> but today we're going to do the Winnebago stitch for the daisy chains and yes it's a daisy chain it doesn't look anything like a daisy chain it has a very cool pattern that comes through on that i was debating on doing that or an earring and i don't know i'm just i want to finish these earrings but i want to be able to show you how it's done so i actually decided to go with the Winnebago. I might just show you quickly how to do the Winnebago and not, you know, finish it off or whatever. And maybe we can roll over to the earring, but probably not today. I'm so super duper just exhausted. So we're going to go through it. I'm going to probably do, I don't know, I might do a little necklace like a choker or a bracelet. I haven't decided yet. And there's somebody right now that's special to me that's kind of going through a rough time. And I was thinking about making her a uh, 
bracelet or something nice to wear and that she might enjoy. So I'm thinking about making a little gift for somebody special. Uh, I just have so much on my plate right now. And I'm hoping that things start getting better a little, a little better soon because it's just that's so much. I am just like, oh, you gotta be kidding me, you know. But um, we'll get her going here and try her out. I hope you guys enjoy the little uh, Winnebago stitch. I, this, as far as I know, will be the last six bead daisy chain. Then we can move over to the eight bead daisy chain. And yes, there's a ton of those too. So <laughs> daisy chain world. And I'm hoping maybe this week, if things get a little better and maybe calm down a little, we can do some different stuff. Like maybe we can work on our little lady souvenir doll or some loom work or something different because that's a little more of a process and I just don't have the time right now for it. So we'll see what happens. But I am going to get everything set up and we will get going on the Winnebago stitch. All right, so as far as our supplies go, we are going to need a size 11 beading needle. I don't think that's gonna focus, but you get what it is. It's a needle, it's just a size 11. I'm just using my short little sharp here. Um, you can use whatever beading needles you have. I'm also going to be using the Wildfire beading thread. Um, it's the same as I always use the 0 0.008 inches and that is you know that's just what I prefer to use you could use anything you want to use um, not any nylon thread you could use a Nymo or something like that but you want to make sure that it's going to be a nylon thread something nice and strong that'll hold your beads really well you're also going to want you know a pair of snippers or scissors and you're going to want your beeswax kind of get a nice little coat on your thread there and you're only going to need three colors you're going to need size 11 beads and you only need three colors now what i'm doing is the traditional coloring you can do any colors that you prefer but this is the actual traditional coloring for the stitch and that is going to be a black size 11 a red size 11 and a yellow and that's it so you just need black red and yellow um, these colors really seem to bring out the pattern really nicely to where it just looks stunning so I mean you can use whatever colors you wish but I would recommend trying it first with these three and then you I mean you could switch the red to like a you know, a pink or something, a blue or something like that. The yellow, I would, you know, you could switch it to like an orange uh, just to kind of bring out that pattern. And the black, something, a darker color, obviously, because that's what's going to kind of pop out those other colors. But any colors that you wish, but these are the traditional three colors for the Winnebago stitch. Now I'm going to get my thread ready here. Get it all waxed up and cut and ready to roll. I think I'm going to do a necklace and I probably will do a bracelet for myself. Oh, I'm sorry. You'll also gonna, you're also going to need a fi your findings too. Now, if you're using a going to do a bracelet, I would recommend like a magnetic clasp. That's what these are. They're little, um, little magnetic clasps that snap together with magnets. And this, these are the smaller ones. You can also get larger ones. And these work great for bracelets. I, they're just the best ever for bracelets. I'm looking for my, these are my old ones. I'm just gonna use up my old ones, but I'm just gonna use your standard uh, clasp for the necklace with the eyelet. So you're also gonna need some kind of findings to put everything together to hold it together to you know and i'm gonna do my thread when i do my thread i'm probably gonna go wingspan and an extra arm span and i know that seems like a lot but i i don't remember how much it used 
and I don't want to have to run out and have to go through and weave in and out and all that jazz. So I'm going to use an, a wing span and an arm span. And we'll get her waxed up here. I can bring you out a little bit probably. Won't hurt nothing. And we'll just find our stuff here, find our, and see how that wax just kind of stiffens that up nice and keep, helps it keep its shape, keep it under control. I love this beeswax. I'm so happy I got this beeswax again. I am not a fan of that pale, weird stuff. It's just different. I don't know how to explain it. It's just, it really, it's just different. It's not as sticky. It's not as thick. And we will get, I know this is a lot of thread. I, I love to use a lot of thread. You know me. I get all, uh, get our needle loaded up here. I can find my, there we go. All right, get all threaded. Whoops, bump into my light up here. There we go. Like so. And then I'll bring you back in a little. Hopefully we can stay focused. And then I'm gonna put out my beads. A little black here. I'm almost out, but I think this will be enough to get through. I go through a lot of black beads. I don't know why. It makes such a nice kind of in-between color. It goes with everything you wear. Like you can't go wrong with black. Oh, I have to open my red. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dig through the soup today. We're just gonna open the one I got here and use that. Maybe. There we go. Whoops. Dropped one. Alrighty. Got our beads set out here. Now your base is going to be the same as all the rest, and it's going to have six beads. So you're going to have that circle, six bead base. And uh, they're going to be red. So you need to count out six red beads. I'm bringing in just a touch. Hope that's not too much. And we're going to count out six here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So we got our six red beads. And we're going to bring those down, down to the base of your thread. And you're going to want to leave a nice, you know, six inch tail on there or so. So you got enough to work with to put on your findings. And so we're just going to tie that into a circle, just like we do with all our others. Go. And one more. Make it a little double knot there. Like that. And so we're going to have our little six beaded circle like that. And our center. Now, when we grab ours, I like to keep my tail down here and keep my thread up at the top a little bit and hold it with this hand. And our center is going to be a yellow. So you want to string one yellow bead on there like that. And then you're going to want to count over from the knot here. You want to count over one, two, three. Go through that third bead right here. Let's try to focus in on those other beads. There we go. And just pull it on up and through. So that's going to create the center of your circle. 
you kind of sometimes you got to adjust it a little bit. There you go. <coughs> Pardon me. Kind of tighten that a little. There, that's nice. All right. Now there's a rhythm to this, like there is with all the others. There's a pattern. And I'm going to go through it with you first, and then we can write it down as we go through our second time through, okay? So for our first step, now remember, we're going to be stringing, the, it's going to be the four and one method with the four beads, one for the center, four beads, one for the center, just like the other daisy chains. And so we're going to want four black, you know, pick up four black beads. I can pick it up here. I'm kind of far away from my work so you guys can see, so it might be a little tough for me. And remember how we did the others, where you, your thread's coming out of this bead here, remember? And you want to go in through the bead underneath that. I got to make sure I'm in the right direction first. One, two, three, three. Boy, I didn't tie that very good on that circle. So you want to pick up your four beads. Your thread's coming out of this bead here, and you want to go through the bead underneath that from the bottom like that. Pull through. You remember, I have a long thread here, so have to be patient with me there. And then you'll have that. Okay. Now for your center, you're going to want to pick up a red bead. And remember we go over, these are the four, whoops, sorry, you're not even on camera. Focus. Okay, there. These are the four that we strung. One, two, three, four. We want to go into that second one that we strung. So there's one and there's two. And we want to go into that one, make sure that needle is over that thread and the threads underneath the needle here and then pull it through. And then I get a tangle. I always tangle when I do videos. That does not happen when I'm not trying to show you guys something. Only when I'm doing a video. But that's life, isn't it? Like seriously. What in the world happened there? I gotta fix this, one second. All right, there we go. And give it a little bit of a tug. Oh, you know what I did? I didn't go over. All right, I think I got all straightened out there. Now, for our second row, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to pick up three, or I'm sorry, four yellows. So one, two, three, four yellows. And then we want to go underneath, you know, our, getting caught up and stuff. Our thread's coming out of this one here. And we want to go into the one underneath like that. Stick it through over that thread and pull through. Just like that. Like so. And then our center is going to be a black bead. I'll pick up a black bead. And see, these are the four that you strung. Those beads are unfocusing me. These are the four yellow that you just strung. And you want to go into that second one, make sure that needle's underneath the thread coming out of that bead, and pull through. It's like so. And it's going to look a little weird because this isn't your standard daisy chain pattern. You can see that Winnebago pattern coming through. All right, now for our, our next row here, we want to do 
four yellows again. One, two, three, and four. And stick it into that bead underneath where the thread's coming out. Pull it through, make sure you're a, your needle's above the, this thread hanging out here. Pull through like that, just like so. And then your center bead is going to be a black again. So pick up a black bead. And then with the four that you strung, these four yellows that you just strung, one, two, three, four, you want to go into that second bead. Make sure your needle is above, or I'm sorry, below, my bad, below that thread sticking out here and just pull through. Like so. See that pretty pattern coming through there? It's really pretty. Once you do a few of them, it's so pretty. All right, now for our next row. Oh, pardon me one second. Okay, so for our fourth row, sorry, I had a little interruption there. Um, our pattern is going to be a yellow, two blacks. If I can pick it up, and a yellow. Maybe. There we go. And again, we're going to come up through. I can get a good angle here. We're going to come up through underneath where that thread is coming out, that bead underneath where your thread's coming out. So come up through there, make sure your needle is above the thread and pull through. Just like that. And we are gonna have that. And then for the center, we're gonna need a, another black bead. And then again, we put our four beads on. Fiddle focus. There we go. One, two, three, and four. So we want to go into that second bead and we want to make sure our needle is underneath that thread and then pull through. Like that. There we go. And that's going to be our fourth row. For our fifth, I guess you can't really call it a row, I'd call it more like our fourth daisy. But for our fifth row, we're going to need a black, two reds, and a black. Like that. And then we're going to want to come up underneath where your thread's coming out here. We want to go into that bead underneath, make sure our needle's over the thread, oh, got up in my stuff, and pull through here. There we go, just like that. And then our center bead, it's going to be a red bead. So pick up a red bead. And then remember we put our four on and we want to go through that second bead, make sure our needles underneath the thread and pull through. There we go. You see the pattern coming through. Isn't that pretty? All right, and now this is going to be our last one, and then we're going to have to repeat our pattern again. So we're going to need four red beads. One, two, three, and four. And then we're going to put that 
in the bead underneath where our thread's coming out. Pull it through, make sure that needle is above our thread. And pull through. <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> okay, and then for our center, it's going to be a yellow bead. So we need to pick up a yellow bead, and then we need to count over our one, two, three, four, the four red beads we just put on. Count over to that second bead and go through it. Make sure our thread, our needles underneath the thread, and pull through. And this is going to be our first design of the pattern. There, it's going to just keep repeating from there then on. But isn't that beautiful? I love this Winnebago stitch. It's absolutely just stunning. These make beautiful chokers too. So I'm going to go through with you one more time with the pattern and we'll, we can write it down as we go. So I'm probably going to zoom out a little bit and remember when we put our four beads on to form the circle, we want our thread above or our needle above the thread. And when we put the center bead on, we want it underneath the thread. Okay, when we put that four bead pattern on, we go into the bead underneath where our thread is coming out. And then when we put our center in, we put it into the second bead of the four beads that we had strung for the circle. So I'm gonna zoom out just a little so we can get everything in onto our uh, pattern. And you can kind of see. So we will go through the pattern here. Now remember our, uh, our base, which we would consider your very first daisy. The very first one, we, we want a string here. We'll write it down here. Our base is six red beads. And then the center is going to be a yellow bead. Okay, now for our first row, row one, what we're going to need is to, we're going to need four black beads. One, two, and I can't see them. There we go. Two, three, and four. So four black beads underneath where the thread's coming out. Pull through, needles over the thread. Like that. And then our center is going to be a red bead. And that's going to go into that second bead of the four black beads we strung. And make sure that needle is underneath the thread. And that's our first row. So row number one is I'm just going to do B for black, Y for yellow, and R for red. So you can use any colors you want. So it's going to be basically every letter of the first colors uh, word. So you're going to want to do four black. And then for the center bead, we're going to need a red. I guess we already strung that. Derp. Okay, and so I will put the centers in parentheses here. So for the center, we need a red. All right, so row number two of our pattern, we're going to need four yellows and for the center, a black. So we're going to do four yellow. One, two, three, and four, yellow. Move this over just a little. And a black for the center. 
like that. And I got a knot in my thread, but it'll be okay. So four yellows and a black for your center. Now for your third row, you're gonna need four yellows. One, two, three, four. Write it down here. For number three, it's gonna be four yellow, and then you're gonna need a black for the center. So it's the same as row number two. Put my four on there. Bring it up through. Get caught on a bunch of stuff sitting on my desk. <laughs> Here we go. And then we're going to want to do a black for our center. we go. For row number four, we're going to need a yellow, one yellow. We're going to need two black and one yellow. And then for your center bead, you're going to want another black. Like that. I don't know. Hopefully you can read my terrible handwriting. <laughs> so find my needle. Here it is. So we want one yellow, two black, and a yellow, just like that. Bring it up through. Get a hold of my needle. There we go. And then a black for the center. It's like that. Okay. And now we're on, we got two rows left here. So we're going to need a black, All right, number five, need a black, two reds, and a black, and a, uh, can't see what that says, a red for the center, like that. So black, two red, and a black, and a red for the center. A little tug, make it nice and tight. Here we go. And this is going to be our last row here. And that's where my pencil go. Here it is. So number six. We're going to need four reds. And a yellow center. And that's our whole pattern there. And basically what you want to do is go through that pattern and then just keep repeating from once you reach row six, go back up to row one and work through and then do it again and again until you have the length that you desire. 
And, you know, you only do that base once because that's got your six beads and you'll know that that's your base because it's got six beads in one, one strand. So you uh, basically just keep repeating row one and six all the way through. And that is the Winnebago pattern there. It's absolutely stunning. I absolutely love it. It's so beautiful. Now, I'm not going to, I will show you how to do uh, your clasp. I'm not going to put mine on right now because mine's obviously way too tiny. So I'm going to have to add a lot more beads to it. But for me, when I would do my clasp, what I would do on both ends, I kind of didn't leave myself much space on the bottom here. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how I do my one end over here. And then that way you'll see how to attach your clasp. And then you can do the same on the other side of your necklace or, or bracelet, whichever you're doing. Let me get another needle here. I think I have a little, there it is. And that way, I mean, you'll know what you're doing that way. So we will, I'm going to thread this onto this end here with the tail. And this is easy enough to, we can finish it and make it look real nice. So basically, I'd probably use, I think I might use black, but first, See, we're kind of, oh, let me bring you in a little bit. See how we're not really centered on there? It's off to the side. I want my thread to be coming out of these two beads, not up here. That's not going to be centered on my, on the clasp when you put it on there. So I'm going to bring my needle through one of them, just one. And you can do this on the other side. You might be coming out of a different spot, but you're just going to want it. What you want to do is you're going to want to bring your thread around the flower however many times till you are in between these two and centered because you want your, your clasp to be centered. So you just come in between those two. I'm going to use black. So I'm going to put on two black beads. Let me get my eyelid out of here. Till I'm using the old ones because the eyelet's came with the clasp and then you want to stick your one half of your clasp on there and pick up two more beads you have something that looks like this okay and then what you're going to want to do is just take your needle it'll focus sorry it's not focusing so well and bring it up and through that neighboring bead. See your thread's coming up down here and you wanna go opposite of that. So bring that through there and pull it through. And then you're gonna have your clasp on there. Just like that. And then you're gonna to wanna to weave, I'm gonna bring you out again. Then you're going to want to weave kind of in and out of stuff so that it disappears in there. That thread disappears and it looks real nice. And I kind of put a knot here and there to kind of reassure, or a, uh, can't think of the word. See, I'm really tired. Sorry, guys. But to uh, reinforce everything. So I'm bringing it through there and bring it through here. Kind of keep that thread hidden, go in, go in the same form and shape and stuff as you would with your other threads because you, you don't want your thread peeking through. You don't want like this crisscrossing over a cross or anything like that because that's going to look, it's going to look weird. So you want to make sure you're going in the same kind of form that you're beads are going in. 
I'm going to add a little double knot here just to make it nice and strong. And that knot will get hidden in between those beads pretty well, I do believe. Whoopsies. I just went in the wrong direction there. Kind of having an off, off day. I wasn't around the right proper bead. Go. I'm going to come through a couple more beads here, just like that. Take off my needle. And I'm just going to snip it a little bit, and I'm using the Nymo, and <clears throat> not the Nymo, the Wildfire. But if you're using Nymo, please don't do this because it will ruin it. But if you're using Wildfire, you can take a little lighter and just give it a gentle little burn and meld those together and then that'll be your clasp on the end and you can do that same exact what we just did on the other side of your necklace to add the other um, part of your clasp and that is the Winnebago stitch here's the pattern right here if you want to write that down or take a screenshot and you'll have it and you'll be able to uh, do it on your own if you remember how to do the pattern. And I'm really glad everybody decided to come by and watch my video this afternoon. I hope you're doing well and I hope you enjoyed the video and are able to follow, follow it well enough to where it makes sense and you can make something nice with it. Let's see if I can get this up a little bit and we'll zoom in a little for you. There we go. I'm going to leave that set there for a second. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Please like and subscribe. I hope you guys have a great afternoon and take care. Thank you.